Bruno, we're crossing now to Warsaw, to the Royal Palace, to hear the Polish President, Andrzej Duda, speak to people there gathered uh, in front of the palace because, of course, within the next 10 minutes, we're expecting to hear from the American President, Joe Biden. So let's take a listen to what the Polish leader has to say. The first missile landed on Ukraine and a large-scale invasion started. Russia thought they that Ukraine would fall in 72 hours, but uh, thanks to the heroic behavior of the Ukrainian soldiers, thanks to the support of the free world, the imperialistic ambitions of Russia were not fulfilled. And Ukraine must win this war. This is why we're supporting them. This is why we thank the United States and all the members of NATO who are sending us uh, the supplies and weapons, which are so important. Uh, we thank the US who are contributing to our security on the eastern front of NATO so that uh, nobody uh, would think of attacking our territory. Thank you to the Allies for their presence, and thank you for supporting us uh, with your troops, supporting our troops. We feel stronger, and uh, the potential attackers uh, will certainly be impressed, and I think in the end uh, the Russian army will have to retire, that Ukraine will prevail and win, and the defenders of Ukraine uh, will have contributed to this big victory and uh, blood that uh, is going to flow, will lead to a big victory. We Poles have the experience of helping, of mutual help, and our Pope, John Paul II, spoke like this also when he uh, talked of solidarity. Nobody must oppose what we obtain through solidarity. Thanks to our efforts, we broke the chain of communism and we entered into the free world. We helped open up uh, the Iron Curtain. This was thanks to human solidarity. And today, it uh, allows us to help the Ukrainians. Thank you to all my citizens who opened their houses and welcomed uh, Ukrainian refugees in their homes. Thank you. We are very grateful. We are grateful also uh, for uh, the way uh, two million people have been taken in, in our country and live now on our territory. It's a big proof of solidarity of uh, the free world. We uh, would like to launch an appeal to all the countries of Europe, of uh, NATO, to show signs of this solidarity, to join it uh, by uh, sending the military equipment that we need, that uh, the Ukrainian fighters need. We uh, have cut off all business ties with Russia because uh, the, of, the, of the bloodshed. Today, only ultra-modern equipment can be useful in this war. And thank you, Joe Biden, for your exemplary courage. 
Thank you to the American nation, the American Congress, for all the support you have sent, uh, for your financial support as well, because thanks to this exceptional contribution, financial and military, Ukraine can continue fighting. It also applies to the contributions of NATO, everything that has come from the free world. We will show our solidarity to Ukraine. There's no freedom without solidarity. And let Ukraine be free. Let Poland, let the United States, let NATO, uh, let Poland all live a long time in peace and freedom. You've been listening there to the Polish uh, President Andrzej Duda speak. Just ahead of the American President uh, Joe Biden is expected to address the crowd there in front of the Royal Palace in Warsaw. This, of course, was the location where a year ago, almost to this day, that Joe Biden spoke at the same place after Russia invaded Ukraine. Joining me now in the studio is Angela Diffley, our international affairs editor. Obviously, we're all waiting to hear from the American president. What is it that he's expected to say, Angela? He will uh, praise Ukraine for standing up after being invaded by Russia, and he will note that NATO has come out of this, so far at least, much strengthened, although Putin's aim was to push back uh, NATO. We now, of course, have uh, the possibility of new members uh, joining NATO. It's very noticeable listening to that speech from the uh, Polish President uh, Duda there. The Polish are extremely pro-American within Europe. They are only too aware of the years they spent under the Soviet uh, thumb, and they are only too aware of how close Russia is. And they have always been uh, very keen to push the threat of Russia and to force the European Union to try to take it more seriously. And so here we heard the uh, Polish president expressing immense gratitude for the 30 billion plus weapons, military assistance that the United States has given or pledged to uh, Ukraine. That automatically makes Poland right next door feel an awful lot more secure. It's interesting what the president said too, uh, to remind people that in 1980 it was the Solidarity Trade Union movement that began in Gdansk in the Polish port city, which led to the eventual collapse of communism, didn't it, Angela? Indeed. And, and Poland has uh, very much, I think, identifies with Ukraine in that uh, even at some stages uh, they have said we, you know, they've even been grumbling within the European Union saying that we didn't lo leave the Soviet sphere to be bossed about by Brussels. They are very uh, jealous of their independence. That said, they are firmly within the European Union and very often express uh, the points of view of more Eastern members, uh, a valued voice within Europe coming from the East there. They're the biggest of those uh, former Soviet countries which joined back in uh, 2005. So uh, they have a valued place within Europe, but they're good at sticking up for themselves. And I think they very much identify, and I think the Polish citizens identify with the Ukrainians for that very reason. If you're just joining us now, you're seeing the live images there of the Royal Palace in Warsaw, where we're waiting to hear from the American President Joe Biden. This, of course, being a critical speech coming less than a few hours after the Russian President Vladimir Putin addressed 
his nation. Angela, I just would like to ask you, I mean, we talked about this earlier, about what Poland expects out of this trip, um, given the degree of military support that they're already giving to Ukraine. I expect they hope that the Americans will be rather forthcoming too when it comes to assisting their military needs. Yes, we talked earlier about, uh, of course, uh, NATO membership is a much more complicated uh, issue, but that the Poles are very keen on some other kind of security partnership, pretty much guaranteed by the United States and maybe one or two other uh, key members of the European Union. Some sort of partnership where if Ukraine is attacked, there is a guarantee that its security will be uh, um, ensured. That is not the same as the NATO Article 5, whereby if any NATO country is attacked, then all NATO countries are deemed to have been attacked and they are all bound to uh, defend uh, that NATO country. It is a different thing for NATO membership. There is an awful lot more behind that. That is what in many many ways uh, this this war uh, it is at the root of this war much uh, much uh, that that question so that is a much more complicated issue but poland in the short term is hoping for something like that they are also hoping to push uh, the americans into agreeing to use the confiscated assets of the russians uh, to fund, basically, a much, much strengthened Ukrainian uh, defence uh, capability. And that is something they will be pushing very much uh, today in, in, in talks and probably already have talked to uh, Joe Biden while he's been there this afternoon on those issues. But, uh, uh, you know, they're very much on the same page today over Ukraine.